Welcome to Kaiser Caliber History, and to another episode of Not How You Know Them, an ongoing series that takes place on this channel. In this series, we examine historical figures mostly known for their roles in World War II and some other world history events, and examine their lesser-known pasts in World War I. This series aims to educate viewers on the Great War and how it shaped the people who would in turn shape our modern world. Today's subject is another infamous Nazi war criminal, who's best known for being Deputy Führer and number three in command of the Third Reich, only behind Adolf Hitler himself and Hermann Goering. He is, of course, none other than Rudolf Hess. This will be a shorter episode than normal, as I found information on Hess's involvement in World War I very difficult to find during my research. However, I have found just about enough to tell his story in the Great War. Hess was born in Alexandria, Egypt on April 26, 1894. He was the son of a wealthy German business owner, and as a child, he was groomed by his father to take over the family business. But as he approached the age to do so, World War I broke out. Not long after the beginning of the war, Hess enlisted in the 7th Bavarian Field Artillery Regiment and shipped out to his first posting on the Somme, and he first saw action at the First Battle of Ypres. In November of 1914, he transferred to the 1st Infantry Regiment, and sometime between then and April of 1915, he won the Iron Cross Second Class and was promoted to Corporal. He then returned to Germany to complete additional training, and after doing so, was promoted to senior non-commissioned officer and received the Bavarian Military Merit Cross. After he completed this training, he returned to France and resumed fighting on the front lines. During this time, he participated in the Battle of Verdun in May of 1916, and a month later in June, he was wounded by shrapnel in the left arm. He spent a month in the hospital recovering from this injury and then returned to the Verdun area till December of 1916. In 1917, Hess was promoted to platoon leader of the 10th Company of the 18th Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment. This unit was serving on the Eastern Front in Romania, so Hess left the Western Front and made his way to his new unit. He took part in regular fighting in this new arena, and was wounded two more times. One was another injury to his left arm, which was relatively minor, but the other was a bullet to his upper chest, which nearly exited his body through his spinal column. This injury required Hess to be hospitalized for recovery. During his time in the hospital, he was promoted once again to lieutenant in reserve, and was recommended for, but denied, the Iron Cross First Class. During this recovery time, he also requested to train as a pilot, and he was granted that request. After he finished his recovery in early 1918, he attended basic flight school in Germany from March to June of that year, and advanced flight school in France during October of that year. After completing his advanced training in mid-October of 1918, he was assigned to the Jagdstaffel 35B, but he never saw any action in the skies as the armistice was signed just a month later. And this ends our story of Rudolf Hest in World War I. Nothing extraordinary, but still incredibly important to the role that Hess would play in World War II. But how, you might ask, because of those five months during his World War I service where he formally trained to become a pilot. Although he never got to fly in World War I, he relied heavily on that particular skill he learned during that time to execute his infamous secret flight to Scotland in 1941. This action by Hess ended up having a shockwave effect on Hitler and the rest of the leadership of the Third Reich. It made Hitler more paranoid that he couldn't trust those around him. It paved the way for Martin Bormann, another ruthless Nazi, to gain power within the Third Reich. And it rocked the fabric 
of the Nazi higher leadership by making them question the control they really had over one another. This suspicion and mistrust among them would contribute greatly to their downfall in the latter part of World War II. And it all leads back to Hess's secret flight. Hess's story is just another example of how the leaders during the time of World War II were absolutely shaped by their experiences in the First World War. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. My apologies for this episode being a little shorter than the others in the Not How You Know Them series. But as I mentioned earlier, sources on Hess's World War I service were very difficult to find. However, I did still want to cover him, as he was an important historical figure during the Second World War, whose story was absolutely shaped by his World War I experience. The next episode in this series will definitely be a little longer, for sure. Thanks again for watching. If you like what I do on this channel, consider subscribing for more content like this. Till next time, this has been Kaiser Caliber History.